This lecture is all about recruitment, interviews, and predictive validation in I.O. psychology. Personnel selection means choosing a person to fill an open job in an organization. But how do we find the right person? The right person to fill a specific position. Recruitment is the process organizations use to attract qualified job applicants. The organization's goal is to attract the largest group of qualified applicants at the least expense, within legal limits, of course. Employers often use a variety of recruitment methods. Past experience may guide a company to place advertisements in local newspapers for a lunchroom supervisor, for example. If that method has resulted in good applicants in the past, sometimes organizations will try a cheaper method, not get good enough applicants, and then try a more expensive approach rather than settle for less qualified applicants. Now, successful recruitment can more than pay for itself. Companies traditionally measure the success of their recruitment programs by using a ratio of the number of job offers to the number of job acceptances. Let's talk about the different recruitment methods. Organizations can recruit internally, externally, or both. Internal recruitment involves activities inside the company, such as posting vacancy notices on company bulletin boards and telling employees about job openings. Now, external recruitment involves activities outside the company, such as advertisements in newspapers or listings with employment agencies and job fairs. The best choice of recruitment methods depends on a variety of factors. For example, internal recruitment is usually cheaper than external recruitment. And so organizations may try internal recruitment first. Then, if the job is not filled by this method, they will use external recruitment methods. Now let's talk about the different factors that influence recruitments. Research has shown that applicant factors, interview factors, and realistic job previews can all influence the outcome of the recruitment process. Important characteristics for applicants are communication skills, enthusiasm, motivation, and their credentials. Let's move on to methods of personnel selection. Selection for a particular job may include some or all of the methods that are discussed in this lecture. Each method may be looked at as a way to reject an applicant, but each technique often is combined with others to produce a final acceptance or rejection decision. And some of these selection methods include application blanks, resumes, and bio data. Weighted application bank is an application form that assigns different values to each answer given by the applicant on the basis of research on successful and unsuccessful workers in the job. A resume is a summary of an applicant's job-relevant background and experience drawn up by the applicant themselves. Biodata Forms is an application form that asks for personal and social information to predict success on the job or on the basis of information from past or current employees. 
Moving right along to interviews. The goal of a good employment interview is to obtain job relevant information about the applicant. Although no single interview pattern fits all personnel selection situations, unstructured and structured interviews are the two types encountered most often in personnel selection. In unstructured interviews, the interviewer asks questions they want to know whenever they want and may change the questions for each applicant. There are no standard scoring systems for the questions given in the interview itself. In addition to being legally questionable by not treating all applicants the same, this type of interview has been shown to contribute only slightly to good employee selection. Now let's talk about the structured interview. Structured interviews consist of questions and acceptable responses that are determined before the interview. This type of interview is much more likely than unstructured interview to meet the legal requirements for personnel selection by accurately predicting job performance. There are several types of structured interview. One type is the situational interview and another type is the job related interview. The situational interview is a structured interview technique that gives applicants specific job related situations and ask how they would respond to each. Now, in job related interviews, interviews that focus on past work experiences, but are not specific to particular situations. And in a psychological interview, these are interviews that focuses on assessing the personal characteristics of the applicant. With so many qualifications to do in good interviews, should interviewing be part of the selection process? Because interviewing is used in almost every selection process, the best answer would seem to be yes. As long as a trained interviewer is conducted a job relevant, structured, situational interview. What do you think? Let me know. Do you think that interviewing should be part of the selection process or should organizations simply rely on one's resume? Let's move on to physical examinations. Physical examinations are a selection technique that evaluates an applicant's physical skills, their health, their abilities, and their disabilities. Organizations use several types of exams, including medical, physical ability tests, drug testing, and genetic and HIV screening. Let's move right along to background and reference checks. Background and reference checks ask former employers and others who know the applicant to provide information about the applicant's past as part of the assessment of possible future performance. Legal challenges have influenced this area of personal selection, at least as much as they have influenced the use of physical examinations. Fear of being sued by former employees has limited a number of organizations to providing only neutral information, such as dates of employment and job title. The fear of lawsuits involving careless employee selection brought by customers and current employees may be more real than the fear of the lawsuits from former employees. 
Also, the fear of being sued has created another legal problem. Some employers are suing previous employers for negligent referral. This means that the previous employer failed to warn the future employer of a particular serious job-related problem with a job applicant. Next, we have the selection decision and predictive validation. Predictive validation studies investigate how effective our predictors are at forecasting the on-the-job performance of applicants. Predictors are measured prior to hiring and criteria are measured after a few months on the job. Let's talk about the steps to demonstrate predictive validity. First, gather predictor data on all the applicants. Second, hire some of the applicants to fill the job positions. Third, after several months, gather performance data that can serve as the criteria. And fourth, Compute a validity coefficient between the predictor score and the criterion score that indicated the strength of the relationship between predictor and criterion. Now, in my next lecture, we will review legal issues in IO psychology, which includes employment at will, affirmative action, equal pay act, the Civil Rights Acts, Executive Orders, Age Discrimination in Employment Act, Americans with Disabilities Act, and Family and Medical Leave Act. I would like to know more about your experience in personnel selection and placement. Tell me more about the recruitment process that you underwent for your current job or your last four current jobs. Maybe you could tell me the type of recruitment methods that were used. And as we stated earlier, recruitment is the process organizations use to attract qualified job applicants. The organization's goal is to attract the largest group of qualified applicants at the least expense within legal limit. So when you're telling me about the recruitment method that was used, please let me know. Was it through an internal vacancy notice or was it an external advertisement you found in a newspaper or online? Let me know.